It was really fun actually fighting with a long weapon because I am a long person <laughs> <laughs> all my life. You know, I'm nearly six foot and, all my, and I've got very long limbs as well. So all my life I've just been like long. Uh, Mr. Boyega, I feel like you brought something really different this time to this particular role uh, in all your variety of career roles. I felt like I was seeing someone new. I don't think I've seen you be kingly. I feel like kingly is like a new quality. Um, what do you feel like you mustered to represent King Gazo? Um, it was a balance for me. Um, a, a definitely a feeling of uh, somebody that knows he's in a position of leadership. And sometimes that shows itself as uh, an extroverted confidence. Um, the way you walk, the way you speak, the fact that you are not really aware of other people's energy, so you'll take extra time to say something because you know you can. Um, that, that requires a different type of, of movement. Um, whereas I've played characters in the past that are afraid of their environments, afraid of where they're at, are moving on to the next place. This one is just like, everybody slow down. I'm thinking. <laughs> and there's something about <laughs> there's something about that command um, that was de definitely kind of you know, intertwined with the dialogue with our, our amazing scripts and obviously uh, my collaboration with with Gina in terms of building up this character. Yeah, like I must not be the only person to mention this, but watching the film multiple times, I'm thinking I'm seeing some prints. I'm seeing some like you're you're. Hi, I'm gracing you. Like you're lucky that I'm gonna sit down in front of you now, and I'm gonna. Sit down. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was I was sat as King Gezo. They were bringing me gifts. <laughs> it's the it's the nonchalant attitude um, of that you would see during that time, especially with King's interactions with people from the outside world, um, not knowing their intention, not knowing how they would would, would like to interact with your people. Mm -hmm. um, and, and not knowing whether or not these people from these foreign lands would be of, of, of service to, to your people and to your family. Um, so that was definitely put into the scenes as well. Right, distance and space, like, I don't Yeah, know like, you brought the You're nice gift, but sit down, we have to <laughs> talk business. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, uh, Ms. Lynch, I was really inspired by your characterization in the, in the, women, in the woman king, um, especially because I saw the Agoje as uh, like a special, like a different group of warriors, a group of warriors quite different than what we've seen before. It didn't feel like a group under one single leader, but with multiple leaders, always bringing on the next generation, always bringing them on board, which you were definitely one. Um, and yet Izoge seemed like the most personable, uh, someone with great experience who doesn't ever condescend to those around her. And I was wondering, uh, was there someone in your life like Izoge? Because I certainly had heroes like her in mind. Oh. Oh, that's really nice. Um, I feel like with with every character I play, I'm trying to draw from the experiences in and around me. And I've had to, you know, take moments from my mom and from like friends of mine and teachers that I've had over the years, mentors that I've um, come across who have taught me a lot about myself. And in playing a character who is trying to teach young women about themselves and their strength and trying to literally draw out their 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 deepest power um, outside of themselves. It's um, important to to take from the people around you. So I don't think I've, I, there was one person that I, I based Azogi on, but I do know that halfway through the training, I thought, oh, she's literally like our personal trainer, Gabby McLean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was able to <laughs> go to training and actually like, take little bite-sized characterizations from her mm -hmm. and bring it to work, which was really nice actually, um, which means mm -hmm. that you know, Azogi can can spread far and wide through outside of our culture, um, uh, in different institutions, in education, students and heads of companies. I think everyone can take a little bit from her, her might and her, her power and how she uses humor and lightness of touch to, to teach and impart wisdom on others. So um, I'm grateful I was able to take a little a bit of each uh, of the powerful people in my life and, and inject it into, into Azogi. Interesting. Yeah. And like in comparison, uh, Miss Atim, like as Naniska's confidant, you're a little bit of the opposite. Like there's like some distance between you and other characters. You're sort of the converse to that. Um, even like your weapon is like, it represents distance. <laughs> That's actually. Uh, <laughs> 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 it's like, keep, That's it's like I'm over here, you're over there. Where, like, where do you see her within the wider organization of the Agoje? Yeah, that's so true. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, Amenza, I think she is 
you know what's so beautiful about that is as you say she's very much in contrast to Azogi but you know the two of them are helping kind of cover the bases in terms of you know flanking Naniska and um providing alternative forms of, of leadership and, and counsel to the people within this army. Um, and I, you know, Amenza is Naniska's best friend as well. So she's also not just, you know, maybe a counsel in terms of military matters and spiritual matters, but also just as a friend. Um, and I think that's really important to see because, and you do see that with Izogi as well, like there's an emotional side to all of this, you know, the, these these women were not automatons, they weren't robots, they weren't emotionless. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think Amenza's trying to grapple with how to engage with the emotional side whilst also keeping distance. I think distance, as you've <laughs> adequately <laughs> identified, is a big part of her. It's, it's a way of keeping order, I think. Um, but what you see in this film is that, you know, keeping order doesn't always work or isn't always the best way to go forward. And so she has to mm. figure out how to grapple with that um, and how to, you know, not just close down some of the distance that she creates with other people, but maybe also a distance with herself. Um, so, yeah, it was really fun actually fighting with a long weapon because I am a long person <laughs> all my life. You know, I'm nearly six foot and, all my, and I've got very long limbs as well. So all my life I've just been like long. And this was a time when I, that was not an, an obstruction, you know, mm. it was something that was mm. accentuated. And, you know, the stunt team, Danny Hernandez was like, we're going to use your long levers. You're going to be fighting on a spear. Your strikes are going to be long. You know, your style is going to be about reach and distance. Um, mm. So that was really wonderful to be able to reclaim my longness. Um, mm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Leo, we're going to have to wrap it up there, but thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>